hello everyone welcome quick explanation so in last video we covered uh, topic 1.3 and 1.4 that is general software features and decent trends and generation of programming languages so last topic for chapter 1 is 1.5 that is categorization of high level languages okay so this 1.4 is one of the most important questions so generally they ask this question from chapter 1 so let's go to the note part so this one I discussed in last topic. So generation of programming languages, we have low level and high level. So high level can be categorized in third, fourth and fifth generation. So if they ask you further explanation of categorization of high level language, that is topic 1.5. So this can be categorized in more depth form. For example, generation fourth, third, fourth, fifth can be further divided into procedure, object, problem and natural. So it is same as third fourth and fifth we have just named them here okay so categorization of high level language there are four categorization of high level language procedure oriented language object oriented language problem oriented language and natural language fine so i think this thing we know high and low level language so let's go to first part that is proce procedure oriented language so if you see the most high level language today are procedure oriented language it means that C language that we're studying so it comes under procedure oriented language so what happens in procedure oriented language we write a procedure or we write we prepare a program module or we write a procedure or a steps by step execution of the program so in this language one or more related blocks of statements that form some complete function are grouped together into a program module or a procedure and given a name such as procedure okay so we write steps we follow a particular steps or procedures that's why it is called procedure oriented language if the same sequence of operation is needed elsewhere in the program a simple statement can be used to refer back to that procedure it means that we prepare a module or we prepare a procedure and we can use that procedure wherever that is required in essence, a procedure is just a mini program. So we can write that it's just mini programs. If you combine that mini programs together, we can form a particular program or we can write a particular program. A large program can be constructed by grouping together procedures that perform different tasks. Okay, So for example, for adding two numbers, we can prepare a procedure. For multiplication of two numbers, we can prepare a procedure. So procedure language allow program to be shorter and easier for computer to read, but they require the programmer to design each procedure to be general enough to be used in different situations. Okay, so each procedures we can prepare and we can use them in some other programs also. Next is object oriented language. Okay, so object oriented language, what we do is we prepare classes here. For example, C++, if you are using C++, so that comes under object oriented language. So object oriented languages are outgrowths of functional language. In object oriented languages, the code used to write program and data process by program are grouped together into units called object. Okay, so we, we prepare objects and each object has their own properties. Okay, so in further, if you are going to study C++, so you will understand this. Objects are further grouped into classes, which define the attributes object must have. Okay, so each object is a real world object on uh, we have certain attributes for that object. Okay, for example, a class can be book an object within this class can be a novel or a short story book and in this this novel can have further attributes for example page number author name objects also have certain function associated with them called methods. The computer access an object through the use of one or more object methods. The method performs some action to the data in the object and returns this value to the computer. Classes of object can also be further grouped into hierarchies in which the object of one class can inherit method from another class. The structure provided in object oriented language make them very useful for complicated programming tasks. Okay? So this thing, if you study C++, you'll know. So we prepare an object. For example, we have a class book. Further, it has some, uh, you can say, some uh, attributes, sorry, some uh, objects name like novel and short story book. And further, they have attributes, for example, page number, author's name. Okay, so it can have method, for example, read book is one method or write in the book is another method. So like that, we have to prepare the classes and objects. Next is pro uh, problem oriented language. So this uh, language we use to solve a particular problem okay 
So third generation languages are valuable, but they require training in program. Many people wanting to write program found it difficult to learn the syntax of third level language. Okay, so this problem oriented language it also come under fourth generation language. So this both are under third generation language, procedure oriented and object oriented. They are third generation language. So fourth generation language we have problem oriented language. Okay. So problem oriented languages also known as 4GL are very high level language. So here like in third generation language we needed to write syntax, we needed to write a particular program with following the steps. So these all are you know um, we get rid of all these things in fourth generation language. It means that we don't have to follow a particular procedure or a particular syntax. Okay. So here they are very high level language and require very little spatial training on the part of user. Problem is oriented languages were designed to solve a specific problem as I told you as the name tools tells problem oriented it is used to solve a specific problem. Example querying database are allowed and allowed the programmer to concentrate more on the problem rather than on spending time on writing the syntax. So here for example if you are using query languages so here you can see that they are used to solve a particular problem rather than writing the syntax of program. So in this we don't have to write particular steps or procedures for a program. For example, query languages and application generators, they are the example of uh, query oriented, sorry, uh, problem oriented language. So fifth generation, it comes is natural language. So natural language, as I told you in previous uh, videos, so natural language, they are more human closed languages. Okay, so here we just use the natural languages like English or other languages, Chinese, Japanese to communicate with the computers. Okay, so they are more artificial intelligence type. Okay, so these languages are still under development. So we are right now we are studying or we are doing research in this natural languages. They aim at providing people with more natural interface to communicate with the computer. So user can speak in any language and the computer is going to reply yes. Okay. So users therefore will not require a special training for writing a program so we don't have to write program here. Researchers also hope that natural languages will able to uh, will enable a computer to learn to remember information as people do and improve upon it. Okay, so natural languages now what scientists are doing is they are they are trying to build the computer as flexible or as like as human being. Okay, so they will be able to remember the things they will be able to understand the things. The standard definition of a fifth generation language is a computer language that incorporates the concept of AI to allow direct human communications. Okay, for example, Siri, Alexa, etc. are example of this. And if you talk about the languages, so Lisp and Prolog are example of fifth generation language. Okay, so here are, here are some differences. So procedure oriented language and problem oriented language. Okay, so procedure oriented, it is difficult to learn. Okay, difficult to learn because we have to write a particular syntax here we don't have to it's easy to learn we don't have to remember all the syntax here requires the specification of how to perform a task okay so here we tell about that how we are going to perform a task or we write a program here we require that just what we have to perform okay because system already knows that how to perform a task here it's difficult to debug because we are writing a program it becomes difficult to debug but here in the user do not need to debug so it doesn't have uh, like it's not a difficulty for the user so it can be said that they are designed for professional programmers okay so here because if you know this language then, then only you can use this language so you need to be a programmer here programmer as well as non-professional programmer can use this because every syntax is already written there we have to just use that program so here the code is difficult to understand and maintain but here the code is more close to human beings so it is English like command it is very easy. These languages use file for storing and retrieving the data whereas this uses database for storing and retrieving the data. Okay so this is one of the most important question difference between low level and high level. Okay so let's go very fast. What are the differences? So low level this is close to machine this is close to human. Hence, if it is close to machine, so they are faster, they are comparatively slower. Low level languages are memory efficient, yes, because it takes very less memory. It is very close to machine, so it takes very less memory, whereas it takes very high memory. Also, this language in the form of bits, whereas this is in the form of languages, high level language. Low level, in part of human being, it is very difficult to learn, whereas it is very easy to learn. 
नेक्स्ट इज प्रोग्रामिंग इन लो लेवल लैंग्वेज रिक्वायर्स एडिशनल नॉलेज ऑफ कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर या बिकॉज इट इज गोइंग वी आर गोइंग टू वर्क इन द फॉर्म ऑफ बिट्स इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टू लर्न अबाउट कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर वेर एज इन दिस हाई लेवल लैंग्वेज नो नीड टू स्टडी अबाउट कंप्यूटर आर्किटेक्चर दे आर मशीन डिपेंडेंट या बिकॉज ईच मशीन हैज एर ओन लो लेवल लैंग्वेज वेर एज दिस दीज आर मशीन इंडिपेंडेंट बिकॉज वी हैव कंपाइलर Here there is less or no abstraction from the hardware. They provide high abstraction. Abstraction means hiding the detail. Okay, so high level language. If you are programming, we have no need to know about how it is working. We are just going to write the program. They are more error prone because we do not understand bits, and they are less error prone. Debug debugging is very difficult here, whereas debugging is easier here. For example, OS is actually writing in low level language, whereas desktop application websites is actually writing in high level language okay so i think that's all for chapter 1 and uh, as i told you some important questions i'll be discussing in last so first question that can be asked from this chapter is about system software second chapter uh, second topic that can be asked is general software features third topic about generation of programming language and fourth topic about difference of low level high level all categorization of high level language okay so you can expect 8 to 10 marks question from this chapter so in next video i'll start chapter 2 okay so let's meet in next video till then take care and have a good day thank you